I've been living here since I was one years old. I've been working since I was 17 years old. You know, I believe I contribute to society and pay my taxes. And But what keeps coming up is this felony and not about the other things that I do. Lundy came to the U.S. when she was very young as a Cambodian refugee, but she was actually born in a Thai refugee camp. So she's never actually been in Cambodia. But she's facing deportation because in college, she was arrested with seven ecstasy tablets. The U.S. government claims that it's deporting serious criminal aliens. But what we found in our research is that many of the people who were ending up in deportation proceedings have minor drug convictions. If they were citizens, they would have been able to go on with their lives. And yet because they're not citizens, even though they're legal permanent residents, they're facing deportation to a country that they no longer consider their own. It doesn't matter if my sister or my family members are a US citizen. It doesn't matter that my grandma and grandpa are a US citizen. Now I just worry. It doesn't matter if I would get married to a US citizen that's not going to affect my status. The focus was that I made a mistake and I should be banned, exiled, sent away to a different country that I'd never been to before. When immigration definitions uh, under the law are so rigid that a judge has no power to make uh, a decision in the case, that the judge has to say, I'm sorry, this conviction means I can't even look any further, you cannot stay, this is the end of the story. We believe that that, in a way, prevents us from making the most just and fair and appropriate decisions. When I started preschool, my first year in school. Arnold is a lawful permanent resident from Mexico. He came to the U.S. when he was very young. His whole family is here, and they're U.S. citizens and permanent residents. When he was younger, he struggled with drug dependency, um, and he had some convictions uh, for possession. Um, and that triggered deportation proceedings and immigration detention. When I was being detained, uh, there's no way of knowing how long you're going to be in there. or. It's not like county jail, you get a sentence and you know, you know when you're going to be released. You just sit there and, w and wait till the judge decides, okay, you're free to go. You could be there three months, six months, and who knows, up to two years, but, uh, but you never know when you're going home. There are certain categories of offenses where people are simply not eligible to be released on bond during their immigration proceedings, and that includes people who are convicted of drug-related offenses. And that does cause increased numbers of lawful permanent residents in immigration custody to remain incarcerated um, until their immigration hearing can be held. Mandatory detention can have a devastating effect on families. Often the primary breadwinner is the one who is detained. Uh, families have lost their homes, um, children have ended up um, traumatized. I had families tell me how their children had to be in therapy. Um, I had people tell me their marriages had broken up under the stress of detention. When I was detained, um, my baby mama was left with my two kids in the apartment. She couldn't keep up with the rent. So while she was, while I was uh, detained, she came and stayed a few days with my mom. And when she was here, somebody broke into the apartment and stole everything we had. His seven months of tension were devastating for Arnold and his family. His father had two heart attacks and ultimately died. Arnold very much wanted to say goodbye, but immigration authorities refused to release him. It would have been different if I was around, you know, just cope with the pain. I don't think I would be so emotionally just this disabled right now, like, like I am now. We're living in a very interesting time for U.S. drug policy. It's recognized that it's had a devastating effect on many communities, including communities of color. Um, unfortunately, that same sense of reform has not been brought to the U.S. immigration system. Um, in their pursuit of deporting criminal aliens, they've gone after people with very old convictions people with minor convictions, people whose families and communities will also be devastated if they're deported. We call on the Obama administration 
to take a, a close second look at their deportation policy and to say that if you have a minor drug conviction, that should not be a reason to deport you.